to learn more about the planning process and how you can unlock value out of any property, click the link below to learn more. I wanted to put together a video to walk you through the appeal process and to find out for yourself whether or not appealing is a good idea, what are the options you have for appealing, whether you're appealing a household like a rear extension or if you're appealing a normal planning decision like anything else, like a change of use or a commercial extension or anything like that. I'll then walk you through what the best steps you should take in order to find out whether or not your appeal has legs and then if it does, what steps you need to take to put together a good submission to give you the best chance of getting a planning permission through the appeal process. But the first thing to say is not to be afraid to appeal. A lot of people are under the false assumption that you can't appeal the council's decision or that the council's decision is difficult to get round. You know, whatever the council says is going to be true at the other end. Or some people just simply don't know that there's an appeal process and what the ways of appealing are. You know, a lot of people don't know that you can actually appeal just by the fact that the council don't make a decision within a certain amount of time. I mean, I think if a lot of people knew that, that would help them out a lot. So don't be afraid to appeal. It's not as complex as you might think. And having worked at a local authority for a number of years and as a private consultant, found that there are, just through patterns, you find that there are certain practices that councils make and you can identify them normally within the decision notices themselves that there are avenues within that application or within that decision that you can pursue and attack to overturn the decision because a lot of a lot of decisions that the council make aren't actually based on strong foundations and unfortunately a lot of decisions are made knowing that applicants aren't going to take the trouble to appeal the whole process now they won't necessarily say that out loud in a, in a planning authority but that is the case it's quite easy just to refuse something rather than just to maybe negotiate with the applicant to make something a little bit better or change it which would make it acceptable so this video is going to walk you through the process that's the first step don't be afraid to appeal and now we're going to walk through what the different types of appeals are how long you have to make those appeals and then how to put your best case forward to give you the best chance of winning at appeal so there are two types of appeals that you can make to planning decisions one is a householder application and the other is a planning decision a householder application you have 12 weeks to make your decision now all of this will be listed in the decision notice so if you've if you've applied for a rear extension and got refused there will be or there should be something on the decision notice that tells you what your rights of appeal are and how long you have to do it for householders so anything that involves just a single house not flats just houses you have 12 weeks to appeal and also a planning decision so if that's a block of flats or an extension to commercial property or a change of use then you have six months to appeal that decision there are three types of appeal process that go up in levels of complexity it starts with written representations now this is the simplest form of appeal and this is generally things that are kept towards the simple applications so like i say householders almost always are dealt with written representations or simple other residential issues or other simple things. So written representations is when when you get refused, the appellant submits a statement outlining why they think the council's decision is false. And then the council submit a statement back. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll just rely on their officer's report. And then those two statements are given to the inspectorate and they make their decision off of that. Then there's a hearing. And these are generally kept for the more complex things and more... Uh, and a more of interest to the community where there's a lot of interested parties perhaps where there's a lot of objections and a lot of nuance to the case so this is where you go to a hearing again you submit a statement much more detailed statement but then you go to a hearing with the inspectorate and you put your case forward the appellant puts their case forward and they speak you speak and that's how it goes and then after that the decision is made the next level up is an inquiry now i wouldn't ever worry about inquiries because if you're watching this video and you're about to go into an inquiry then you're probably a professional probably a professional consultant or a developer this is where you're getting into the nuance and the minutiae of of policy and this is where you're getting cross-examined by the other half so normally this is where barristers get involved so let's say a council makes a decision for this reason and they have a report behind that they'll have a state every 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 officer that that is involved in the application process will need to write a statement. So that'll be a conservation statement, a a statement from the officer, maybe urban design, maybe sustainability. And if the application has been refused on those matters, 
then that specialist, so that officer, will get cross-examined by the other parties. So the other party's barrister will be going into the very, very detail of their arguments and trying to unpick why that argument is, is invalid and why the inspectorate should actually make a decision to the contrary. So very, very detailed, very skilled, kept to the professionals. So I've spent too long on it, but just be aware that those are the three levels. Written representations are the basic level, two statements, you write a statement outlining why the council's decision is wrong or in, or you think it's in yeah you, or why you think it's wrong hearing is when you actually go to a chamber or a room with the inspectorate each party has their go there's no cross examination and then inquiry is when there's cross examination and it gets very very complex and very stressful by the way for the officers involved and the other half because you are getting assessed on every little element of your decision-making process and it can be very, very stressful for officers. So moving on from that, you want to find out whether or not going down the appeal route is the right thing to do. So the first thing to do is to, and these are the kind of fundamental steps that you should assess your own application on anyway. So if you're if you're thinking of doing something to a house or a property or looking to develop it, these are the steps that you should take before anyway. These are the steps that you should research your site to find out the development that you have in mind has got any legs but having said that if you've got refused these are the steps you need to take so the first step is the planning history now is there a planning history on your site first of all if you've got to this level already you probably already know that there is or there isn't so if you've been refused for let's say an outbuilding and the reason for refusal is something along the lines of it is not in keeping with the character of this area something along those lines or the massing and the design and the scale are too large for the area or something like that. The next thing you want to do is go on the council search engine and look for decisions that have been made on proposals like that and you'll be surprised how often you will find decisions that actually approve the same thing that you got refused for. Now the context might be different, it might be a different site and there might be reasons for that and that's what you find out through the planning history process but also you might find the decision was actually granted in a very similar circumstance to you, maybe down the road or even next door, but it was made a long time ago. So the council will kind of lean back on that and say, oh, it was made a long time ago, different different planning policies. So that's why this is not acceptable anymore. It's a new time. That is an opportunity for you to demonstrate. My example is no different to that example. So then you can attack that and then write a statement as to why that's not the case. But within that planning within that planning history, let's say you find that example of the outbuilding. Not only do you want to find out the decision, but also you want to find out how the officer actually dealt with the policies and the proposal at that time and look for the language they used. If they say things like the outbuilding would be unappreciable or you wouldn't be able to view it from public areas. The, the scale of it is in keeping with the local area. It's not, you know basically saying that it's acceptable but you want to look at the reasons why and it's those reasons that you will then take from that argument or from that decision and put it into your own and then demonstrate look it, it it's not visible from public views just like x number down the road it's exactly the same proposal you can't view it from public areas it's acceptable for these reasons and then you go through that process so you can look at the planning history of the local planning authority, but then the next level up is that to look at the decisions that the inspector has made. You might find that the local planning authority has refused schemes like that, but if you go and look at the planning inspectorate search engines, you can do that. If you just type in planning inspectorate, planning appeal search or something like that, look for your local authority, look for decisions similar to yours and find out what the decisions are. If they've allowed it, then you look at the inspectorate's reasoning as to why. And that, if the inspectorate has allowed it, it's got more weight if it's re more recent, but look for their arguments because the inspectorate is a level above the LPA, the local planning authority. And if they think something is acceptable for X reasons, then you can lean on that and use those examples and use that argument to say why yours is, yours is acceptable too. Now, more key to this though, is really the, the reasons for refusal does it sound woolly? It's amazing how often that a planning authority will throw in a reason for refusal and actually it not forming, it, it's not tangible, you don't really understand it. Or it's subjective and it's something that you can really with the right arguments pick apart. You know, things like, like I've, examples I've said already, like if it's not in keeping with the local area, I'm sure there is something in the local area nearby that would, ne that would show why it's in keeping. 
or trying to pin down the local authority as to what exactly is the character that they're talking about, you know, getting to that kind of level of detail, because like I say, those are the types of decisions that are made by authorities to keep people at bay and to keep certain development away when actually the inspectorate might step in and say, you know what, what they're proposing and if everyone appeal and if, and if, and if other people had did that in this local area, it would be okay. But because the planning authority are bound to their members and they're bound to their community, they make decisions based off of those kind of pressures. So sometimes what comes as a result of that is decisions that aren't really, don't really have any basis. So I appreciate that's a lot to take in, but there are certain steps that you can take to really pick apart a, count, a council's argument. Now, there may be things that you just can't get around. It may be that it was refused because you're in a flood zone and you can't have residential units at ground floor because you're in a flood zone. Or it may be that you're digging a basement and you're impacting a really important tree that can't be avoided and that's just something that is un inarguable. You can't argue that fact. It's And that's the reason for refusal. You can't damage a tree in this area. But when there's subjective things, that's an opportunity to appeal and really challenge the local authority. One of the key things you want to do through the application process is to whittle the reasons down for refusal. If you keep them as to few as possible, when it gets to the inspector, you've got less reasons to address and attack. So if you whittle them down to one or two, then you're in a better place. So that was kind of a whistle stop tour. So as I say, there's two types of decisions that you can appeal. There's householder and there's planning decisions. With householders, you have 12 weeks to appeal. With planning decisions, you have six months. And then dependent on the type of appeal, you've got written representations, hearing, and then inquiry, which you will almost always avoid. And then picking apart the council's argument, what to look for. What are the reasons for refusal? Why do you think that your proposal is actually acceptable in light of that reason? And then there's steps that you can take to, to pick apart that argument through the planning history with the local planning authority or the planning history, the planning inspectorate, and then looking at how are those policies that the planning authority used to make that decision, how are they actually used to assess your application? Because you may find arguments there that don't really stack up. And it's at times like that where you'll find that decisions, reasons for refusal are quite woolly and can be attacked with the right arguments. So I hope that's useful to someone who's looking or considering appealing a decision. And the big message is don't be afraid to appeal. You have your options. It's not as complex as you might think.